So, after I finished up with the SSD and hard drive, I went and picked up my power supply. And uh, I chose this one, the uh, CX550M from Corsair. There's a number of reasons why, but uh, we'll see and talk about that once I open it. There's a couple of reasons why I picked this one. First off, I was looking for a power supply that is not semi-passive. So that's what you want in a modern computer, but in a really old computer. Well, but like any 20 year or so old computer, your power supply is your exhaust fan, your case fan. So we don't want semi-passive. So we don't have problems with graphics card and CPU overheating. Another reason I picked this one, now I don't have the original one, I actually gave it away yesterday because I've been giving away uh, parts left over from these two systems that I don't need to other Mac owners. The old one has 126 watts on the combined 3.3 volt rail and the 5 volt rail. This is 120, so that's close enough. And uh, the amperage rating is very similar within a few amps. So that's one reason I picked this one. Then uh, we obviously got uh, almost 46 I on the 12 volt and we don't need that much. We had 6 on the old one and we convert the CPU from 5 volts over to 12. So we want a little bit more on the 12 volt compared to the old one just in case. Another reason I picked it is here on the back side. If I had the old one I couldn't compare but this is the location of this is the same as the old one, and here is where the 230 and 110 volt AC switch goes, the old one, and you would have your output here for monitor. So I figured this might touch on the plastic to get the back here, but we can cut that off. But I really don't want to make like big holes, new holes. I uh, saw on the back side of the case the plastic piece, so one reason I picked this one because of the alignment here matches a lot closer to the original one and a bonus it's a semi-modular so we don't have to have PCIe and stuff hanging around I hope shouldn't have no looks like only 8x and power so anything else we can pick and choose so that's a good thing so now we have the power supply we can finally get rid of the one hanging off the side and actually put the system together in one piece which I have been waiting for I have the post supply mounted uh, the footage I took originally was uh, well, very blurry, so you missed the mounting of it, but uh, it's just a power supply. I just want to point out that it might look like the power supply's fan is facing the back side, the back side of the case here, and uh, it's obviously facing it, but it's not touching it, or it's not as close as a photo might indicate. It is about, I would say, I can get my fingers behind there, I can feel the fan grill. It's about a half an inch or 12-13 uh, millimeters, and there's also a clearing up here and up uh, above the power supply, so the air can move up and in here. It can come from here, so it's not ideal, but it's really not an issue. So uh, the ventilation is fine. So here we have the back side where with the power supply mounted, and as you can see, like I hoped for the power connector is exactly where I want it. The power switch is uh, easily accessible and the plastic here doesn't touch so that's fine. We got some bonus exhaust there and obviously we can use the old exhaust. We can keep the look quite original here without actually using, using the original supply which is nice. Okay let's try this out then. Power is on. Shine.
on, rebooted. So that seems to be a success. We have a working new power supply. It's a nice cold draft here. The next thing I want to do is uh, upgrade the RAM to 2 gigabyte. We have 512 now. And also notice that this is not ECC. And uh, neither is that one. But these two are. So I just find it a little bit weird, but it seems to work. I don't even know if these ports support EC. I don't think so. No, I don't know. I'm not sure. But they should work anyway. They're probably white. I'm complaining. So, put my in. So that's the RAM. So as you can see we have 2 GB of RAM. So that was a nice upgrade. So almost done. So here we are again with the Mac. I've been downloading, installing software and so on to have something to show you and just be able to test it out. So I've been playing around with it for about a day. So, I will boot it up now and we take a look at, uh, first off, at the slight issue I have. But I don't think it's an actual problem. But we take a look at that first, and then we move on. So, let's boot it up. Here's the problem I mentioned. What we have here seems to be a cache-related issue. Uh, the built-in memory test has detected a problem with the cache memory. Please contact your service technician for assistance. Now, I have been doing some testing and some research. And uh, first off, this doesn't happen with the original CPU, only with the upgraded one, the modified one. And I don't see anything like this in OS X, like a pop-up or anything. And the computer works fine otherwise. So, but there is a debug menu in the in OS X. So we look at that because there's some more information there we want to look at. So OS X is booting, it's fine. It's quick. It runs off the SSD. The initial boot is a bit slow. I think it has to do with the controller card I added. But as soon as it kicks off, it's so no errors here at the first glance. So I can select about this Mac. Uh, more information. And then we can go to debug and the diagnostics here. Here we have an error. I think it's the same one as before. So this error basically tells us that uh, a check failed. And the failure type is external cache. And for the observant ones, you know this CPU doesn't have an external cache that I put in. The old one has 1 megabyte of uh, external L2. This has 256k of internal L2 and no external L3 cache. Most people, or basically everyone I've seen do, do this mod has external L3 cache. And what, what I think is going on is that this motherboard, the system we're in there, always came with a CPU with external cache, so the system, the motherboard is expecting external cache, doesn't find it, disables it, and then basically logs it as an error, and passes that, that on to the operating system. And that's why OS 9 uh, gets that prompt at the boot, and once you confirm the, confirm the error in OS 9, it keeps booting as fine. OS X doesn't pop anything up, but you get this error here. <coughs> So I decided to run some diagnostic on it and some benchmarks, so let's check that out. 
So, I put in a CD with the Tech Tools Pro 4. It's uh, one of the tools I found that will boot on this old Mac and allow us to run a wide range of diagnostics on the system. So we will boot that and it seems to be like uh, a slim version of OS X with uh, the tool obviously on top of that. So it will take some time to boot this. So we'll get back to, to it once it's fully booted and so on. So here we are in the Tech Tool Pro 4. So we can also test, there are some predetermined profiles here. We're really only interested in like the basic test here. So we can go straight over here to test. And here is hardware is the same. So we can run that. And it will test all the pieces of hardware. So now it's run its course here. We can check. I want to look at the cache. That's where we think we have a problem. And let's see what it says here. So it tests the L1 cache and the L2 cache, and both caches check out fine. So that means we have no problem with the onboard L2. And I would find that kind of weird if we had a broken on die L2 cache. Why would the CPU work then? So the caches check out fine and we can see here everything is green, everything says pass. So there's no obvious fault according to this program. And we can run a test if we just want to test it. And it says cache 1, cache 2, check, fine. So yeah, I think we're good. I think the, the problem we're having is that this motherboard expects the external cache and flags it as broken because it doesn't exist. And the OS picks up on it. But it doesn't make the computer actually broken. Uh, from all my installation of game, testing games, programs, it hasn't crashed once or acted weird. And it seems to benchmark roughly where it should according to what we've done to it. I have run uh, Geekbench on it and it gives me around 400 points. This is about 20 less than the 732 MHz version of the CPU in the Quicksilver. So that kind of makes sense with the fact that we have about 75% of the bus speed now. So we're losing the equivalent of like 100 MHz from the CPU natural performance. So. It's not fast, but it's roughly where I think it should be uh, compared to a lot of Geekbench scores and it seems to line up. So, I have installed a few games for testing here. So, we can start with, say, Unreal Tournament. I'm just quickly going to show you some games here because we're going to do a Voodoo 2 upgrade later. Well, Technically, probably a downgrade from the GeForce 2 MX, but I want the Voodoo 2 and 3DFX experience in OS 9. And the GeForce 2 MX is more for like OS X, obviously. So, because this computer is going to be used on like retro lands around the millennium era we run. So, a Voodoo 2 is a nice fit. The GeForce 2 is like one generation too new. We usually run up to GeForce 256, and this is very the equivalent of that, roughly. The poor man's GeForce 256. So it's kind of okay, but uh, I really like having a Voodoo 2, or two of them. But from what I read, they don't scale at all in OS 9, quite the opposite. So I'm gonna use a quite a good, a nice, uh, creative one. 12 megs, maybe is the plan. Uh, yeah, okay. Not playing your setup. That 
check out the preferences here. Eight hundred, sixteen hundred, sixteen colors, etc., etc. I've had a demo made to time these things, but it doesn't run on this thing. Uh, seems like map actually is missing on the Mac version that I used, so I can't find it there. So I just uh, have one lot usually for benchmarking because I don't want a lot of AI running when I'm testing because when you play multiplayer you don't have AI usually. But let's put in three bots there and start it up. I'm also gonna do tools here, so time doing stuff this bit. So you can actually see the average frame rate and uh, over time and the current one to your right. Hopefully you can see it. Very difficult. Very difficult to play on the side here of the screen, but we'll do our best here. I think it runs fairly well. Uh, I do have like Pentium 3 700 overclocked to 933 with the uh, Geforce 256 and that is faster. Mm. Probably around like 50%, so like this has about 2 thirds the frame rate on average, I think. And with an Athlon with DDR about around overclocked around 950 with the G yeah, Matrox E400, I got. 109 I was saying on my demo and stuff. But we're running with a few more bots now. But I do like to I want to see an average of around 60 at least. This is sort of a bit below now. But perfectly playable. So yeah. Let's move on to some other games. So we can try and real here. I can't find the, the menu to activate the frame count. It doesn't seem to be supported here. It's not the same. The latest, this version is 224 beta 7, and on the PC side, you usually use like 226, I think, non beta. There seems to be some features missing here. The funny thing is, though, that I'm really usually more demanding on the CPU uh, on PC than on a tournament. And I suspect it has to do with AI and bigger maps in Unreal, so... But, uh, yeah, I think Unreal, I just tested it quickly, but it seems to run really well, so uh, that's nice. I do like to play some co-op Unreal, or well, sometimes just play by yourself. That's pretty nice. Prisoner 8, over 9. A bit of an earthquake, okay, I think. Prisoner four, prisoner three, seven, six, seven, 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 So, finally got the weapon here. Let's see. This area tends to be very demanding on the CPU. You have a lower end one. It works really nice. That's nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mirror surfaces. Usually also more demanding on the CPU. I think also the E Force 2 is helping us out a bit here.
this is unreal and it runs very well, I must say. So yeah, I think I'll leave it at that and we move on to some quake. Let's do some quake 3 here, Arena. Systems. This is the settings I showed you. The resolution doesn't matter, matter much for FPS until you pass uh, 10, 24 by 768. 16-bit uh, colors usually always faster on graphics cards like these. You have to go up a few generations until 32-bit basically is the standard. Uh, light map, high metric detail, max textures. Uh, game optional, turn on of most like like the the sky and so on. There's a real performance on most computers and simple items. So yeah. And the nice thing is we can quite easily uh, benchmark this. second on average. It's not like awesome, but it's playable. I can get up to around 54 I think with uh, tweaking everything to the lowest, but that mainly affects maximum frame rate, not the low ones, which is really what you want to pick up. So yeah, quite three words pretty well. So what I'd like to do now is to try Quake 2. Let's say by 600 now. Four. That's very close to 85 of the, uh, of the monitor's refresh rate and the uh, Quake 2 has this bug that even if you turn V-Sync off it's always on. So I can get about 80 frames uh, in this time demo up to 1024 by 768 so not, I'll tell you we can even run 16 by 1200 but you're getting like 45 something like that then. So we basically capped out on this monitor here. I can't turn anything off. So, I have this uh, Voodoo 2 from Creative, a 12 megabyte version. So, fully populated with memory. So, we will be installing that. Like I said, I could have uh, fitted two cards for SLI, but uh, from the test I've seen, that actually performs worse than a single one. And my, uh, I don't, yeah, I can get two matching ones, but they're eight megabytes, so that's also a downside. I have more texture memory twice on this card, so. Then we just have to add this, this pass-through cable at the back and we can hook up the monitor and install some drivers and that should work. I have, we have installed the Voodoo 2, I have 
add the, the drivers to the operating system in extensions here, that's your drivers so you can see them here when they're loaded now I have configured these games, the ones that worked and uh, I expected Quake 2 to work with it but uh, there's no glide options anyway and I have patched it but it seems like Abudu 3 should work it defaults to the first card, the main primary card, and also the, the readme file says for that patch you need like the beta 11 drivers, and the highest I could find was beta 10, but I didn't try those. The ones that seems to be recommended is beta 5, so this seems like I can't run the wood 2 with that. And uh, Quake 3 Arena actually offers glide support now, but when I select it, it still defaults to the uh, eForce 2MX after it tries to use the Glide support and the, the console reports uh, Glide being selected so I think it's also incompatible, the drivers are probably not feature complete or something but uh, both Unreal and Unreal Tournament works, so we're gonna try that As you can see, maybe I hope uh, we have three DFX Glide for Macintosh. That's six four by four eighteen, sixteen bit colors. That's the only thing supported. High and wood and textures and so on. So let's uh, try this again. The frame rate is actually quite decent, it uh, seems to be a little bit behind the EFS 2 MX, but that's obviously a much faster card. But uh, we were kind of CPU limited, so the difference isn't that great. And uh, the frame rate feels kind of st quite stable. Where are you, Bob? Kick off on rail. So here I think under drivers here, I've selected two effects. Usually you do it when you install the game for a call. So and we can see here the reflections, which is quite nice and the wood too. So Uh, Wood 2 tends to have a uh, high gamma value by default, 
uh, 1.3 instead of 1.0, so much easier to see now. And obviously, obviously changed the gamma, but uh, on every graphics card. Uh, but this is the default one. And as you can see, it's very smooth. I don't have a frame counter though in this game, but yeah, good enough. Still very smooth here. That's nice. So that is Unreal on a Mac with the Voodoo 2. So let's have a look at the final system. We have obviously the new power supply, top right corner, the CPU, modified CPU and cooler with new fans. We have the GeForce 2 MX. With the two, we have two gigs of RAM. We have a 80 gigabyte Seagate hard drive, two 64 gig uh, SSDs, and a SIL 3112 SATA card. Yeah, and we got the adapter for the power supply and uh, power to the CPU. Thank you for watching and this is uh, the final result, so see you another time, bye.